for applications and which are the commonly used lubricants with their standard specifications and their requirements okay so yesterday's live in previous lecture we are seen always what is the lubricants what are their properties physical or chemicals so today we have to see how to select this lubricant what are the requirements of this lubricant oil should have to certain desirable properties okay so that they do their function properly so we always see the lubricating oil should have available in wide range of viscosity it should be able to dissipate the frictional heat efficiently it should be stable under thermal stresses it should have low volatility it should have good mechanical stability it should be a economical also having a long life the two major categories of the lubricant oil are mineral and natural oils so mineral oil are from we are extracted from petroleum products while the natural oil we are getting from vegetable or animal oils okay so in today's lecture we have to see selection of the lubricants <coughs> for proper lubrication and working the lubricant oil should have some desirable properties okay whatever the application we are having some applications and on that basis on that basis applications we have to fix some desirable properties for this lubricants so under this properties there are some chemical properties or physical properties okay then let's we have to see the classification of the oils or lubricant and their grades with se se it is nothing but society of automotive engineers are suggested the oil grades motor oil or gear oils or engine oils okay so we have to see the sa classification of this oils and sa is nothing but society of automotive engineers and we are always seeing multi grade oil and vegetable oils so under this sa classification we are seeing here sa grade with their viscosities because viscosity are always categorized the oils okay so commonly used viscosity grades have been standardized by this sa and each lubricating oil is designated by sa number which is indicative of the viscosity means what is the number of oil what is the number of oil suppose this 5 which shows the viscosity of that oil and w shows this winter grade oils so each lubricant oil is directly designated and table, uh, the, uh, under this table the so grades the viscosity range okay so here we are seeing these are the sa grades under which this some motor oils and some are gear oils so sa 5w or sa 10w okay and these are some oils are having multi grade oils gear oils okay so here this is the viscosity in acs at minus 18 degrees celsius and at 210 99 degrees centigrade okay so this viscosity of the oils are always measured at the references 210 farad or 99 degrees centigrade and viscosity of the oil with w suffix are measured at 0 degree sorry minus 18 degree centigrade the w suffix indicates the winter getting of the oils when sa number is more it indicates the oil is more viscous so 
if the AC number is more, oil is viscous. If the AC number is low, then oil is less viscous. Some oils with polymer are added to them at high viscosity indices and are called as multigrade oils. So these multigrade oils are always used in both the higher grades at one grades. So this is because they are in one grade at zero or minus 18 degree centigrade and higher grade at 100, sorry, 99 degree centigrade. So suppose this is an example 10 W 30. Okay. Suppose we are having the oil 10 W 30, which means oil may have viscosity 8,000 ACS, okay, within this range, 6,000 to 12,000, 8,000 ACS stable in your cell. So, this suggests 8,000 ACS and 65 ACS at 2105. It falls into 10 W range at 0 degree. Fahrenheit and SI 30 at 210 Fahrenheit. For this reason, it is called as 10 W 30. Okay, so in this way, we have to designate these oils for SI gradings. After that, we have to see whatever the oil are used or lubricants are used in your systems or applications, after some times, these oil are degraded or they lose their viscosities or they lose their properties for proper functionings. So how to recycle of these used oils and how to convert these oils for again reuse, you have to see now. So, recycling of the used engine oil. Now we are seen in trucks, cars, motorcycles, or lawn meter, movers, etc. The engine oils are to be extracted. And by dropping our used motor oil to recycling. Okay. So, whatever be the oil removed from the sum, it should have to be used or recycled for another applications and we can prevent this pollution and conserve energy for a safer and healthier tomorrow. So, what are the benefits of this recycling? So, recycling use the motor oils and keep it out of our rivers, lakes, streams, and even groundwater, in many cases, that means keeping it out of the drinking water. So these are the drawbacks and all our beaches and away from this wild life. So we are share this responsibility by protecting our environment and keeping our waste water safe. The recycling oil use allows to continue enjoy what may ask you to blend it with or clean waters. Okay, so many persons who are unfamiliar with the importance of this recycling used oils unconsciously and harmfully effect for the environments. So for it, especially emptying the used oil into strong drains, it can cause a really harm. So, to avoid it, to avoid it, we must have to recycle this engine oils for sustain the environments. Then our next point is use of recycled motor oils. How to use this recycling? We are saying recycle the engine oils, but how to recycle this motor oils? So we have to see now, re-refining, okay, re-refining, re 
conditioning, re-refining, re-conditioning, then reuse, and again reuse oils under reprocessing. So this is the cycle. Again and again, use and recycle, use and recycle. Okay. So re-refining, re. Under this re-refining, there are modern re-refining with careful. Feed and product qualities. Okay. Now, currently, averagely, fourteen percent of the used motor oil is refined, and the consumer demands for this product has re-refining from the economical efficient for all oil manufacturers. Okay. So, the re-refining oils can be used for our ancillary. applications okay then how to manage this recycling or the waste or the regenerations reuse recovery or reprocessing etc okay so for recycling or the reprocessing of soils we are having one diagrams flow diagrams and in this we are seen prevention generation of this used duplicate oils prevention or generation of the used duplicate oil here we have to prevent don't use this oils or generate of used duplicate oils okay so for some application we cannot use recycling of oils or collected oils directly we have to generate or re produce again by processing used lubricating oils so here we are seen oil is collected from all the sources here and again from this point we are Collecting this engine oils, and from this we are see land filling. So, pour the engine oils in your lands. This is the first option. Second is burning without energy recovery. Okay, burning without energy recovery means burn or combust all these oils without loss of the energy or recovery of the energy and third one is discarding the dumping means whatever we are in lubricant oils or engine oils you are dumped you have to be discarded them or demolish them okay then again from the collected oils we are going for reuse and from this collected reuse but for fuel product which is in combustions and here reuse for less severe lubricants okay so for this line we see less severe lubricants here what do you know lubricant are mixed with combustions that will be seen so here regeneration under this regeneration we have to use re refining processes to do to best of and another is rejuvenation reconditioning plus re additizing to finish loops means recondition here re refine the reconditions so that we can regenerate this again lubricants and which are available readily available for the use okay here from this reprocessing and under this reprocessing we have to use some blendings 
blendings or laundry or reclaiming of the oils then distillation cooking or cracking range of the fuel products and third one is waste oil combustion okay next one is waste oil combustion so this is the oil management system okay how to manage the oils how to manage the used oils by reprocessing re refining we are seeing this flow diagrams and lastly we are having this disposal of this scrap oils okay how to dispose the scrap oils scrap those oils which are not recycled or not reused or only they are <coughs> scrap so how to dispose them okay so during the normal use of the oil the impurities such as dirt metal scraping water or chemicals can get mixed in the oils so that in time the oil is no longer perform well so this used oil must be replaced with virgin or refined oil to do the function properly when all above recycling process are used oil are not possible then the oil is considered as scrap oil okay you see when no recycling processes are used or not possible means there is no any process for recycling such oils can be scrapped okay and who are unfamiliar with the importance of this recycling used oils are unconsciously harming the environment by throwing it away with their normal garbage so scrap oil so just like we are seeing here the flow diagram of oil management system in similar way we can say disposal of the scrap oil first of all to collect the scrap oils first of all is collect the scrap oil after collecting either you may use it for land filling use for burning without the energy or you discard dumping scrap oils means you cannot reuse of this scrap oils so this is <coughs> in this way we have to use your lubricants so that they can function properly with their applications okay so next topic is bearing materials okay up to here we are seen the some basic mode of lubrications and in under this lubrications which lubricant oils are to be used either they it may be solids or liquids or semi solids with their desirable properties okay so next we have to go for bearing materials all of you seen the bearings in our home in our ceiling fan we are having one bearings okay on that bearing our fan shaft is constructed and our fan is function okay so what are the bearing materials first of all you have to see from which materials the bearings are made and majorly these bearing materials are classified in two types metallic group and non metallic group okay so metallic group under this metallic groups bavits or white materials bronzes copper leads aluminum alloys silver alloys cast irons hard materials okay these are metallic groups and under this non metallic groups the bearing materials are to be carbon graphite ceramics plastics rubber wood 
etc okay so we have to see one by one davids okay this material are also, also known as white materials these are provided as a excellent bearing materials and they have a silvery appearance so these babbit materials are also known as white materials which are appeared in silvery colors and these are classified into two categories again lead based babbits and tin based babbits okay lead based tin based the babbits are to be a large extent the extent desirable for bearings the babbit possesses excellent bondability embeddability स्पीड and temperature are moderates this bronze material are an alloy is an alloy of copper and tin which is used as bearing materials as bearing materials it is used in a machine bush and this bushesh may be a one piece of split so what are the advantages of this bronzes we have seen these are due to adequate bearing properties they are used for the most of the applications they have great strength they can easily and economically fabricated in specially french designs okay and they are used in the application like bushings gears pump impellers guides camps wire drawings etc in this now third material is copper and copper lead this material are made from the mixture of copper and lead and often with a small amount of other element like tin nickel zinc and iron okay so major constituents of this alloy bearing material alloys are copper in the percentage up to 55 to 75% and lead from 25 to 45% and this aluminum alloys uh in this aluminum alloys when alloyed with small amount of tin nickel copper or silicons that may perform very well the full advantage of this aluminum alloys they possess a good fitting strength and in stains high thermal conductivity the layer of lead tin copper reduces the possibility of corrosion and improves the ductility okay the next material is silver they are commonly used in aircraft applications and is pure silver as such then disadvantages silver as a bearing material 
performance of which was not considered to be satisfactory okay pure silver has a poor score resistance and low degree or embedded degree they have relatively low conformality degree cost of silver is very high and to overcome this all problems remedies have been suggested overlay of a lead or lead indium on a steel backing increase in photic resistance high thermal conductivity these are the cast ions which are also used for the bearing materials and these are suggested the materials on cast iron bearings which are a little larger than as if the hard particles are torn loss from this cast iron they will not tend to jam in the clearance phase then we are having some materials like porous metal bearings or sinter metal bearings hard materials etc so these are some bearing materials and under non metallic group we are having this carbon graphite okay this bearing have self lubricated qualities because graphite are the materials are the lubricating materials and when we use the bearings are have self lubricating they are chemically inert and can tolerate wide range of temperatures these bearing are available in simple or complex sleeve and can be press fit okay so this graphite carbon bearings are used and where the acidic environment and process fuels applications we can use carbon graphite bearings are used in a pump handling molten salt at 650 degree centigrade graphite bearing are also found in a water pumps gasoline pump fuel oil etc second one is ceramics and cements this material have superior wear resistance okay ceramics superior wear resistance they are bonded with metals using cobalt as a binder but the one major disadvantage of the ceramics is that they are relatively high friction which may be a problem in gyroscope instrument okay so Third material is plastics. Plastics. It is one of the important non-metallic bearing materials, which is incorporated in the bearings of industrial machinery. It provides a better overall performance. So it has lower coefficient of friction, good resistance for impact or vibrations. plastic performs well with water cost of plastic bearing is quite low but at the same time the disadvantage we can see expense does the volumetric stability of the particular plastic is the matter of considerations so plastic can operate satisfactorily for a temperature below 95 degrees centigrade and plastic has poor thermal conductivity therefore special attention must be given to carry away the heat generated by the friction in plastic bearings so next uh, material is rubber it is also good bearing materials where the abrasive material may present in the lubricants generally water is used as a lubricant and it is also served as coolant so rubber find a wide application in the stern tube bearings of the ships on a number of centrifugal pumps and for shafting bearings on deep well pumps fluted bearings are most common okay the last material is wood okay the wood has varieties of the applications we are having always familiar with the wood and it is used in light duty machinery and apparatus which in employ the small impregnated hard maple lumberings okay 
for heavy duty applications or operations it employs the lignum vitae which is the following properties it is the hardest cell lubricated and most dense of all woods okay it will not float in water as the grain is very closely interwoven it is also non contaminating it is used successfully in contact with salty water okay so among from these bearing materials how the construction of this bearing is also we have to see there are two types basic types of the bearing constructions one is solid bushing and other is line bushing so in solid bushing it can be manufactured from a round bar or can be produced by casting process as a single cylinder cylindrical unit with central bore okay so this solid bushing are always perform prepare from bronze bearings is a particular example of this type of bushing when worn out it can be replaced as whole element the line bushing it is similar to solid bushing only the additional ring is inside and generally of babit materials or white materials the outer ring is made up of steel thus babit is backed by outer steel bush and therefore it is called as line bushing usually line bushing is split up into two folds and provided with a locking element which prevent the axial as well as rotational movement with respect to bushing so there are majorly two basic constructions for this bearings so in today's lecture we are seen selection of lubricants commonly used lubricants bearing materials and this bearing constructions so 